Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom TV edition for the week of May 7th, 2018. This week in TV news, we've got more updates on the DC Nation, or the DC, uh, yeah, the, the DC streaming app. Shows and things, and there's a new Vampire Lestat, and all of the stuff that's going on. We're gonna talk about it right after this intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Big news about the DC Universe. That's what it was. DC Universe. I'm dumb. All right. So DC Universe, the streaming app that Warner Brothers is putting out uh, that's going to apparently be nothing but DC shows, which I ain't mad at. Uh, we talked a couple weeks ago about a show called Metropolis that is going to focus on Lois and Lex before Superman was a thing and they're like a, it's like a buddy cop show uh, that show is getting pushed back because of the James Wan uh, helmed Swamp Thing show that we talked about last week this is good news because they said that they are uh, they they are redeveloping the series so hopefully we will get a series that uh, so the purpose I'm sure of this series was going to be to show a lot more of Metropolis so that we can see what's going on in this universe aside from the things that directly affect Superman. That is all well and good, but if you put Lois and Lex as a supernatural uh, investigator, like, that doesn't make any sense. There is nothing in the comics that references any sort of relationship between them, aside from the fact that they're linked by Clark slash Superman. So hopefully this redeveloping thing means they're going to completely change the focus, complete, not, the, uh, not the purpose, to completely change the, uh, the framing for what they are trying to establish with the series, again, which is to expand the world of Superman without using Superman because uh, then we'd have to well who are we gonna cast as Superman and is it gonna be uh, Cavill or is it gonna be the guy from the Supergirl series or are they gonna cast a new one which means we're in another alternate universe and then that just gets so confusing so yeah I understand marketing wise how this makes sense and uh, it like just Let's not have Lex and Lois. We're not gonna have the Lex and Lois hour. That doesn't make sense. Anything beyond that, sure, let's give it a shot. But th those two as a buddy, no. Let's, ah, procedural, gone. Out of the, out of the question. All right, so moving on, we're talking, we talked a little bit, I, the Paramount Network uh, is the channel, is the network that is replacing Spike TV. Uh, we talked uh, when the announcement was made that they're going to be doing a uh, uh, Vampire Chronicles series. We didn't know exactly what that entailed, if they were going to rehash uh, the, the first book and then hopefully actually properly do the second book and then just continue on like they did for True Blood with uh, the Sookie Stackhouse novels or what the situation was. Well, we got a little bit of information uh, the official Facebook page for Anne Rice's uh, Vampire Chronicles books, uh, they posted a picture of a pilot script. It was just the uh, front front page of the pilot script. The, the name of the episode is called uh, Wolf Killer. And it was penned by Rice's son, Christopher. So Christopher Rice. Um, but... And they also showed the official title of the series is going to be The Vampire Lestat. Uh, no, no other hints, no anything else to expound on what the direction for the series is going to be. But 
since they're focusing on Lestat, it makes sense that they're going to touch on uh, ground from the books, but they're, the books are so old at this point, I would imagine it's going to be more the last two books, and then kind of just referencing them and also breaking into this new ground, hopefully because Rice's son is involved and potentially Rice herself. Uh, I believe actually she was going to be a producer if I remember correctly. So these are all good signs. This is, again, we're expanding a universe. We're, we're seeing more of the lay of the land. And since Lestat is immortal, we can effectively be doing Lestat stuff forever. Uh, as long as it's good, I'm totally down. So fingers crossed, hopefully Paramount, uh, the Paramount Network will, will pick this up and run with it in the way that makes the most sense in that Rice should have full creative control because she's the one that knows these characters because they live in her head. Uh, but kicking on down the road, we're talking about The Walking Dead. Uh, season 9, had, you know, they've, they've started doing pre-production on Season 9. And it was announced that we're going to see Yumiko and Magna, uh, characters from the comics. Uh, they're going to make their live action debut sometime in season nine. They didn't say when exactly, so d there's there's no real indication of what the actual storyline for season nine is going to be now that the Negan storyline has finally come to an end. But the indication of those two characters is that we're going to be getting the Whisperers eventually. If that is in season nine, or if that actually happens in season 10, and we just get these two characters to begin with, we don't know that yet. Uh, as we get closer to actual production, we will be getting leaks and so on and so forth, and we will be talking about it right here on Generally Nerdy. I'm passing the question off to you guys, though. What do you want to see with Yumiko and Magna? Do you want them to jump right into that Whisperers uh, storyline, or should there be another story arc uh, because we're way far behind the comics at this point so we're n probably never going to catch up we could cut a little bit of the fat out and kind of skip a couple of things but what do you guys think what should we see in season nine for walking dead let's talk about that down in the comments next on the list though is channel zero the anthology horror series that the last season really was was beyond beyond bizarre just Ouch! <laughs> Every episode was like, what the hell? Uh, so next season is going to be based on, they, they announced uh, season four, it's going to be based on Charlotte Bywater's story, Hidden Door. The title of the season is going to be The Dream Door. It's going to start Maria Sten. I'm not entirely sure who that is. Uh, she's going to be playing a lady named Jillian Hope Hodgson. Newlywed moving into her, her home with her husband, Tom, uh, who's going to be played by Brandon Scott. Steven Robertson will play Ian, a psychology student fascinated with a mysterious door in the couple's new house in their basement. Um, and Steven Weber will be playing Abel Kamaki, uh, the therapist that Jillian goes to see um, named after popular ghost finder so this one sounds like it's going to be a little more traditional in its horrorness uh but it is channel zero so i don't think they've done a single se season that was traditional uh so we'll see a little bit more as we get closer they haven't begun production on it yet they just made the announcement of casting so pre-production is probably almost done there were, we're probably looking at production in the next uh, few weeks to a month or two Next up on the list, we have our final bit of news for the TV episode this week. Uh, what we do in the shadows. FX uh, has just ordered 10 episodes of this of a season of this show that is based on the Taika Waititi mockumentary about the life, uh, in, a day in the life of vampires. It wasn't a day, but it was you know, a, the life of vampires, effectively. And we got all different kinds of vampires and yeah. It's hilarious. If you haven't seen it, it is on Netflix. Go watch it. It's 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 dry. It's not like quite British dry because they're all uh, uh, New Zealanders, but it's it's dry. So uh, this one though is not going to be based in uh, New Zealand like the lat like the show or the uh, mockumentary was. It's going to be based in New York. 
uh, starring Matt Berry, Kayvon Novak, Natasha Dem- Demetriou, and Harvey Gulian. Wow, I am sorry about the names. Uh, they're going to be, just like the premise for the mockumentary, they're going to be vampiric roommates. I probably, I am sure they're all going to be different kinds of vampires through the ages, just like we got in the mockumentary. And I, I hope, I hope this is a, like an office kind of situation where the original version of it was very specifically geared towards people of not America. The office was uh, Britain, whereas uh, what we do in the shadows was, again, New Zealand, but still carries that the, the essence of that series or of the original so that we can adapt it to the our more American sensibilities, but not 100% because The Office was still pretty damn dry. So, yeah, still, there were definitely those moments of, oh, I can see the, why this came from a British show. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the same thing happens. It is FX. Uh, no, I didn't see any report on who the showrunner was going to be. Um, if Taika Waititi is going to be involved at all, or if, or if they're just borrowing from his original creation, I don't know. But we're definitely going to be keeping our ears open because, again, the original was so great. That, though, is the end of the episode, guys. Thank you for watching. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know down below in those comments. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website. Generallynerdy.net is the website. You can go find the social media links, the store links, get your nerdy swag, or you can support the channel more directly over on the Patreon page, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. Jump on for a dollar a month. There are more tiers. Check out the website, though, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, man, click that like button. Ring the bell if you haven't already because, you know, subscriptions don't matter on YouTube anymore. If you are falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face. There's another box up there that's, you know, something else. Maybe Adventures in Photography, maybe Renaissance Nerd. You know, uh, it's, I'm, I'm not in the future. I don't know what I put there yet. But either way, before we click on buttons or push the, the links or whatever, please, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>